Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. If you recall, about seven months ago, I scored a block of Chinese elm. Fresh log, freshly cut, beautiful wood. And at that time, I promised you a tale of two bowls. So here's number two. In this case, this bowl was rough turned back then, at that time, same time as the other one, but I had to wait some time for the wood to dry. I weighed it periodically and, and then when it stopped losing weight, yeah, okay, it's dry, I can finish turning it. And I think it is worth the wait. It is beautiful, it is perfectly round, and the wood finishes very, very nicely with this. Still, there's a place for the other one also. But my tail is now complete. This wood has a flat side where the log was ripped in half. This allows me to use my pin faceplate on the spindle. This pin faceplate is simple with a bunch of screws driven through the faceplate with the points protruding about an eighth of an inch. This, with live center pressure, is more than enough to keep this heavy, wet wood secure. The bark is thin and solid, therefore I do not need to drill a starting spot for the live center. This setup is ideal since I can adjust the point to optimize it how it will turn. I rarely try to round off a big blank like this one on the bandsaw. Besides the wood being very heavy and therefore dangerous to cut a circle at the saw, I do have room to adjust the mount. I have clipped the corners with the chainsaw, but nowhere close to the final circle. I feel that I can tool away the excess wood about as quickly this way, opposed to the time to make a safe cut on the bandsaw. Slow goes the cut at first, as the wood is very off balance. Still, I have to start somewhere. How about the bottom corners? As the bull gouge cuts it round, I can increase the speed and be more aggressive with the cuts. Then cut back the bottom to see where I can cut a tenon. Looks good, so I continue to round off and shape the bowl. I am committed now. There is a crack to remove at the top corner. I have to cut back the height to get away from the pith. Now swap the pin faceplate for a chuck and reverse the bowl. I'll keep the live center for safety while I take the initial heavy cuts. After flattening the top, I can hog out some of the interior. These cuts are from the center going deep and cutting out. I can remove a lot of wood, but this is risky. I have to make sure that the wing of the gouge does not catch at the outer wall. Then switch to a more precise cut from this rim to the center. Since this will be left rough, I do not need a lot of precision, but I still leave the post at the live center. Finally, take out the post, followed by a couple more cuts. I am experimenting with Type Bond 2 as a moisture sealer. I applied the glue with my fingers, which left a heavy coat. After the glue dried, I recorded the date, species, and initial weight in grams. About every month, I weighed it again and recorded the new weight. It appears to have lost 35%. Quite a diet. Since the moisture loss is now minimal, it should be close to a stable moisture content. It looks like it is oblong by about a half an inch. No problem, I have enough wall thickness to accommodate the difference. For this mount, the chuck jaws are closed. The bowl is pressed against the chuck with the live center. Yes, this may damage the interior, but I still need to tool the inside anyway, so not a problem. 
The original live center divot provides a center mark for this mount. I really hate it when I have it cut away. Job number one, refine the tenon to make it run true again. A spindle gouge and skew make short work of this. While still mounted this way, I can start refining the exterior to take out the difference from the warp and work towards the final profile. For this, I often use a shear cut with my bowl gouge. Hand her down, cutting edge more vertical relative to the wood. This enables light cuts, removing a minimum of wood. But before going for a final profile, it helps to trim back the rim from the vertical warp. Then I can go for final profile. I like a little flare at the rim. It signals fingers that the rim is near. Reversal time again using the newly trimmed tenon. It is time to refine the hollow and take out the warp difference. An intermittent cut on the inside is a bit dicey. I cannot ride the bevel. But after a couple more cuts, I am again on solid wood where I can work on uniform wall thickness. I stop a couple of times to measure as I seem to often have a thicker bottom until I measure. I guess it is due to my primal fear of funnels. I finish up with a heavy bowl scraper, staying away from the more vertical sides. A small round scraper does a better job on the vertical sections due to its smaller cutting edge. Then sand from 80 to 400 grit. I am not one who brags about starting with 180 or 220 grit. I have seen too many of those people leave tiny facets on their bowls, which would disappear very quickly with 80 grit. I finish sanding with 400 grit, then apply walnut oil for a nice matte finish. But what about that mounting tenon? Since I have a set of cold jaws, I will use them. Otherwise, I would press the bowl against a faceplate with the same live center point. I would have to leave a nub there to later cut off my hand and sand. But with the cold jaws, I can work the entire foot. Based on early re advice I received, I never try to have the tenon provide the wood for the foot. That is the purpose of the slightly larger ledge that has been there since the very beginning. Even so, I always check the wall thickness to be sure. Then remove the tenon and cut a simple concave profile for the foot. After sanding the foot area, a little more walnut oil blends nicely with the previously finished surfaces. It is finished! took a lot longer because I had to wait for it to dry, but this Chinese elm bowl is pretty with nice grain figure. This one was much quicker in terms of calendar time, but not elapsed time. It's about the same. But it has its own character as a natural and bark edge bowl. And it's interesting to see, think of how these were oriented in the tree, and they were this like this with the pith in between. So. We'll see you next time with another one. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to press the like button, and be sure to wear your face shield most of all.